Hello ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back, this is Force, and here today we will be playing some Magic Duels Origins. It, it's it's still not out, I'm sorry. I, I, I was misinformed in my last video, I got some wires crossed, I thought the game was coming out last week, it obviously didn't, it's still not here. But uh, I wanted to show you some gameplay anyways, we got to play first, uh, I might actually draw a new hand here. God, this is abysmal. Go down to six, alright, I suppose. Yikes. It's kind of rough. Well, I keep this hand anyways. Well, yeah, I got I got I got a little mixed up. I apologize for that. I was incorrect. So I, I people are saying it's coming out this month, but I don't even know. I, I really don't know. I have anyways. We're here with Magic Duels Origins. We're gonna play some games today. I'm playing a black red deck. It's uh, kind of a fun little deck with some combos, some late game combos. I saw this on No Goblins Allowed, thought it'd be fun to give it a shot. Uh, I've got all the cards unlocked now. I ended up spending about $80, so if you're wondering sort of what that process is like to unlock all cards, seems like it's about a process that cost $80. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and attack for one. Uh, so we're playing game in a, against an AI opponent because the game's not out yet. It's still early access. I, I, I sat around for 30 minutes to try to get matched. It just wasn't happen. I'm, I'm guessing very, very, very few people actually have access at the moment. So, not a lot of people to play against, but we are playing against a hard opponent. There are three tiers of opponents, uh, easy, medium, and hard. And depending on the AI opponent you play against, you get different amounts of gold. So easy is five, medium is 10, hard is 15. And then when you play against a real opponent, you can get 20 gold in a, in a real multiplayer match. So that's sort of how they, they uh, do that tier thing there. Let's go ahead and attack for three. Although, we, uh, playing against a hard opponent, we haven't seen much uh, from them quite yet. So yeah, this black red deck, it's uh, got some fun combos, lots of uh, sacking creatures, pulling them back with things like Gravedigger, got the uh, Abbot of the Carol Keep to, to get stuff from the top of your library, play extra things, oh, that's just a bunch of fun stuff that we can do, we're gonna Evolving Wilds. Let's go ahead and dig for red, so we'll be sitting at two red and two black next turn. Um, and also, some Planeswalkers here, now if you just have seen magic stuff just by watching my videos here on YouTube, then you've literally never seen a Planeswalker. They're incredibly powerful cards that come into play and have counters on them and have a plus effect, a minus effect, and then a huge minus effect that's usually like a game-changing ability. Um, so we got nothing to pull back. This is not really the time to Abbot of the Carol Keep, so I am not going to. Uh, so I'll show you what Abbot does. It's a 2-1 for 2. Prowess means when we cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. But it's got the ability that when it comes into play, you exile the top card of your library and you can play it until end of turn. So the idea is if you set yourself up with something nice at the top of your library, you can then throw down Abbot and play that right away using like scry effects and things like that. Uh, some cool interactions with some of the Planeswalkers. Hopefully you're drawn to some of them. You know, here's a, uh, here's a nice card for us to have. Let's actually go ahead and attack before we do anything else. So I'm going to swing my opponent for three. Really, uh, the, actually confused because we still haven't seen him do anything. And yes, I'm not, I, I'm not lying to you. This is supposed to be a hard opponent, but nothing hard has happened so far. We're going to play Read the Bones, three lands. We get to scry two and then draw two cards and lose two life. So we scry two. We decide if we want to keep any of these from the scry. I really don't. So we're going to put both of these to the bottom of our library and get two new cards. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Chandra, Fire of Kaladesh. Uh, oh boy. I'm pretty excited about her. Uh, so I'll show you what she does. I'm going to pass the turn to my opponent. Three lands for a 2 2. Whenever I cast a red spell that includes creatures, untap Chandra. I can tap her to deal one damage to a player. If she's done three or more damage in a turn, exile her and then flip her to her transformed form, which is this Chandra Roaring Flame. She starts off with four counters, plus one deals two damage to a player, minus two deals two damage to a creature, minus seven deals six damage to each opponent. Each player dealt damage this way gets an emblem of worth at the beginning of your upkeep. Uh, this emblem deals three damage to you. So the idea is you plus counter up a few turns and then minus for the huge effect for super strong, or you use the uh, utility of the minus, but that gets you further away from being able to minus the big one. So those are, that's sort of the, I mean, that right there, that's the general principle. Those are how Planeswalkers work. Now the interesting thing about Planeswalkers though, play the uh, Rakdos Guildgate. Uh, so we got five right now. I guess we could just throw her in play. And then if we draw another red spell besides the Abbot, we can guarantee to get three for a single turn because we ping, she untaps, ping, she untaps, ping, and then that'll flip her. And we have the two Gravediggers, so in case she dies, we'll be able to 
Uh, in case she dies, we'll be able to uh, come pull her back with the Grave Digger, which is really nice. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed here. Here's the Elite, the first creature this freaking opponent has played. 2-2, two, two, uh, enters the battlefield, control another elf. Oh, okay. He gets to put a 1-1, one, one. so he doesn't control another elf. I guess just a bad draw for the AI today. I suppose that's what it was. Okay, that's not another red spell, unfortunately. It's another guild gate. Well, I think, uh, I guess we just attack with the three. Not the Chandra, though, because we don't want her to die. I could take a chance with the Abbot and just keep my fingers crossed and hope that I get another red spell, but that seems kind of silly. Oh, you know what? I'll, I know what I'll do. Yeah, here's what I'll do. All right, we're going to attack, uh... With this. Oh, no, I'm counting on him blocking the Goblin Arsonist, which is very unlikely. I could take a chance, play the Abbot, and then hope I draw, uh, exile a red spell that costs four or less, but that just seems unlikely, and it, I'd rather not waste the chance to transform her. So I'm just going to have her sit here. And I can deal one damage to him at the end of his turn if I want. Well, I, I mean, I will, if obviously, because I didn't attack with it. All right, uh, target creature gets plus two, plus two, and fights another creature. He's going to force the fight with the Arsonist. Um, that is okay with me, actually. Because now I can pull back the Arsonist with the Gravedigger and get the Ablet Arsonist in one turn. So we're going to get to flip Chandra, it seems. Not going to block that. Looks like we're going to be able to flip Chandra. Can we do it next turn, though? Four? We should be able to do it next turn. Because we're going to have four, five, six, seven. And that costs one. Okay, so here we go. Ready? Uh, it doesn't matter. This is going to kill the opponent anyways. That's hilarious. Oh, well, whatever. Um, do this. Play a Grave Digger. Pull back our Goblin Arsonist. Confirm. So Goblin Arsonist comes back into the hand. Then we play a Abbot, which untaps Chandra, because he's a red spell. We ping the opponent again. I wish this didn't kill him, because I want I want you to see uh, Chandra come into play. Like, I want you to see her... Actually, let's see what it exiles. Not that it really matters, most likely. Oh, it exiles a land. All right, let's play the land. Then we play the Arsonist, which untaps her again. And uh, we get to ping a player. I wish I could ping myself. Oh, I can't because of simple targeting. Oh, whatever. Ping him and finish him off. <laughs> Which is going to flip her, but I also win the game. So let's play another match, shall we? Because that's not... I want you to see something happen. But there's the 15 gold we get from winning a match. If you get any achievements, it'll show it to you right here. It looks like that screen pops up even if you don't get achievements, though. Which is kind of odd. So yeah, once again, uh, a solo battle. Uh, we, we can't really do versus because there's literally no one around. And um, we got 15 gold for the hard mode, which is what we just did. You can see that that's, like, selected now. Just proof that we actually played a hard... It was not hard, though. And a battle against a real opponent here will give you 20 gold. And all that gold once more. Uh, if you didn't see my last video, it was used to buy those boosters. So let's play another match here. Because I'd like to get a little more competition from my freaking hard opponent. Like, the hell was that? That was not... Some competition, please, here, wizards. Well, hopefully we get a little bit more of a challenge this time, because that was just a bit ridiculous, to say the least. I don't know. Ooh, another Planeswalker, too. Um, I like this one a lot, because it's much easier to trigger. Yeah, this is really good. This is a really good start. We're going to keep this hand. Uh, start for the Rakdos Guildgate. Taps for black or red. And so let's take a look at our um, Planeswalker that we got here. This is Liliana, and she's a 2-3 lifelink. And whenever another non-token creature you control dies, we get to exile her and flip her. Uh, if we do get a 2-2 black zombie. But let's check this out. Uh, plus 2, each player discards a card. Minus X, return target non-legendary creature card from your... Uh, with cover mana, cost X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Minus 8, we get an emblem. Whenever a creature dies, return to the battlefield under your control at the beginning of the end step. Whenever any creature dies, we return to the battlefield under our control. Kind of insane. What is this freaking foil glacial forest? You goofball. Uh, Liliana, really good. <laughs> really, really good. I like it a lot. All right, uh, two drop. Why don't we play the Arsonist? This sets us up to do Liliana next turn and trigger it. Know what I'm saying here? 
We are set up to play Liliana, and then if this thing dies, which we can even sacrifice it with a fiery conclusion. Um, maybe I should wait to be able to sacrifice it with the bone splitter until he has a creature, because I don't want Liliana to die here. Never another non-token creature you control dies. Yeah, I don't want Liliana to be targeted and die. But I also don't know that I'm gonna draw another land. So I might not be able to play Liliana and Bone uh, Splinters in one turn. So let's just try throwing down Liliana. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed right now. She doesn't get counterspelled. She does not. Beautiful. So we'll swing for one. Now all I need is him to play a creature. We can sacrifice our Arsonist with Bone Splitters to flip Liliana and get her in her Planeswalker form. And I just I, I just want to show you some awesome Planeswalker action, so please play a creature. No, he's not playing a creature. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah. And then we're going to force him to start discarding stuff. So do I have Bone Splitter or Fiery Conclusion? Fiery Conclusion is an instant, so let's do the Bone Splitter. It's going to cost one more to cast because this thing's in place. So we're going to destroy that. Um, sacrificing our Arsonist. Maybe I should wait a turn, actually. Because then I could destroy another creature. Yeah, I don't I, I don't want to risk it. I could destroy another creature and then use the one damage to kill his 2-1 in a future turn. But I don't wanna I don't wanna wait and have Liliana chilling out. You know what I mean? And potentially like I just don't want to risk it, that's all. Um Yeah, don't didn't want to risk it. All right, so let's go each player discards a card. We're going to give her a plus two, which is going to bring her up to five. And uh, we will get rid of... Let's get rid of... Uh, oh, gosh, I don't know. Just get rid of... Uh, we can get rid of Dragonfall. We can get rid of this, and we can just pull it back with the Grave Digger. Yeah, let's get rid of that. We can't even afford that right now. He's going to get rid of a uh, Goblin Glory Chaser. Must have just drawn that. Oh, no, wait. He doesn't even have the red mana to play it. Okay, so that's what it is. Doesn't even have I gotta be honest, I'm a little disappointed so far. Where is the challenge in these hard mode things? I'm hoping to get my butt whipped, to be honest with you. Although, that might not be the case anymore now that I have freaking Liliana in play. This is so amazing. Really, guys? It's so amazing. Alright. Um, we can force him to... Ki we can force that by... Actually, let's go um, Dragon Fodder. And then Bone Splitters. Kill that. We can attack him for two. Um... Kill that, sack this. Then we're gonna force him to discard a card as well. Each player discards a card for plus two. And I'm gonna get rid of Fiery Conclusion. I want the Grave Digger because I can pull back another creature. In fact, if I had another Grave Digger, we can kind of do like an infinite loop with that, but because we can keep sacking a Grave Digger, play a Grave Digger, pull back a Grave Digger, sack a Grave Digger, and keep getting the plus two effect. But we only need to do this once more, and then we're going to have the eight necessary to get our emblem in play. Um, we could also pull creatures back with the minus X effect if we felt like it. Like, I could pull back an arsonist, for example, for one. Uh, but we can only you can only do one of these triggers a turn. That's basically the, a big thing with that. Uh, Enchantment, whenever a creature occurs within the battlefield, gets plus one, plus one to end a turn. Okay. Hmm. Don't know that that really matters. Um, hell, let me sack the Evolving Wilds. Each player discards a card. No. I don't know. I probably should get a land, huh? But it's not going to matter next turn. I'm going to get rid of the Gravedigger. I've decided. I really want this land... Um, I can pull the Gravedigger back with the Leona's effect if I want to next turn, but I'll probably just do the 8. Oh, shoot. I don't know what I have. Oh, God, please don't. Okay, that's fine. Good. I have the duel. Good, good, good. All right. So we'll attack for 3 now. So with this really getting her in play really screwed him because he's just been discarding card after card after card. He's only got one card in hand right now. At any point, I can pull back, you know, I can, so I can, I can minus four, pull back Grave Digger, play it, pull back another creature, but I will likely, I, I think, just play the Emblem to start. I can also play, play a card. What the hell? Oh my god. Okay, well, whatever. Alright, so let's play this. Let's, um, force each player to discard a card. 
Get rid of the one card that he has. Act of Treason. Okay. Attack for three. <laughs> Uh, I get. I mean, I guess at this point, there's no sense in even doing the minus eight. You know what I mean? Let's see what he plays, if anything here. Nothing. Wow. 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 Okay. Well then. Well then. You know what I'll actually do? I think I'll. There's no sense in doing the minus eight right now. Pull it back. Onto the battlefield. Let's do minus five. Get the priest of the blood right. It's gonna get us a five five in play. Plus the priest. And we can hit for three. Alright, he is down now to seven. Oh man. What is this garbage? Enters the battle for to return to our creature to his hand. Uh, he's gonna do my 5-5. Five, five. God damn it. It's plus one, plus one. Doesn't really matter. All right, take two from him. Straw card, flesh bag marauder. Do this. Sacrifice. Sacrifice this. He has to sacrifice his 2-2. Two, two. And um, now the question is, let's do the, let's do the plus, I guess. Or do we do just do the minus and get a, get a creature back in play? Let's do the uh, not the grave digger. Let's do the pie. Let's do the, the minus X. That's non legendary. That's right. Uh, let's do the grave digger again. So get another five five. Hopefully he doesn't have another bounce back. Um, although we should just be able to kill him next turn. Even if he does bounce uh, something back here. Well, I guess I'd say I'm a little disappointed with the difficulty of the AI, or the lack thereof. Uh, but I am happy to show you these decks. I'm also sad that I didn't get... Th there was really no sense in getting that emblem down. But the emblem would have been crazy. Uh, fetching back creatures from the graveyard, however, also kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> So we've got more than enough damage to finish him off right now. He'll block the 5-5 five, five flyer, but it doesn't matter. We take two from him. Ooh, here's the Chandra. And the nut doesn't really make a difference right now. Uh, let's just go ahead and swing for the victory then. And uh, yeah, I guess that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, a couple games here against the hard AI. A little disappointed with the difficulty, to be honest with you. But um, it is what it is. I'll see you guys later. More Magic Duels Origins coming up, among other things. Take it easy.